Coming up this morning for you on Daybreak, a new member of the Me Too Springfield team helps bring some comfort to victims. And Crosslines is getting ready for the holiday season. It is that time of year. Plus, we continue our look at everyone's child and meet some men who know the importance of the bond between father and son. We'll have those stories and more for you this morning on Daybreak. Good morning, and thanks for starting off your week with us. It's Monday, November 4th. I'm Lauren Barnett. And I'm Joe Morano. As we begin a new one, I hope everyone at home had a good weekend. Finally got some sun. That was nice. It right? was. Yeah. Are you full of wings? You went to yeah. Wingapalooza, went right? To wing yeah. Didn't spend it outside. I spent it inside <laughs> at Wingapalooza. Stuffed to the gills with buffalo sauce and chicken. That's good. No regrets, everyone. <laughs> Still, Fantastic. You got to run on something Monday morning. <laughs> Might as well be chicken wings. Exactly. Right. <laughs> it was nice. So I need to go run around, work some of that stuff off. Elisa Rappa joins us this morning as well. Uh, you know, should I be going outside at all today? To, to run around and get some exercises? Yeah, no, it's going to be nice. Maybe not quite as sunny as it was all weekend. A couple yeah. more clouds today, but dry in the afternoon and temperatures pretty mild. Not a bad day. Yeah, really nice Sunday, too, yesterday. Yeah, um, yeah, we had temperatures a little bit below average all weekend with the sunshine. Today will be mild again with an increase in cloud cover because the cold front will come through dry as we had through the afternoon today. We're starting out seasonal with that temperature at 41 degrees, south and southeast winds at 8 miles per hour. Uh, we've got a few clouds out. There this morning, things are dry as you had to work and school. Uh, we've got those temperatures warmer than yesterday. I went out yesterday morning; it was a little bit cold. Uh, we're a little bit warmer by about 10 degrees this morning. It's 41 degrees in Springfield, 39 in Branson, and 40 in Mountain Grove. Winds are out of the south this morning at about five to 10 miles per hour. Those southerly winds keep us mild today. So uh, dry roads as we head through the afternoon. We will find an increase in cloud cover though by dismissal. Temperature around 60, 60 degrees, starting to get partly. To mostly cloudy. We'll squeeze out some showers from this front overnight tonight. Then we're looking at another cold rain on Thursday, which could lead to a localized flooding threat. Details on that coming up in 10 minutes. In an effort to provide more comfort to victims of sexual assault, survivors who want to share their stories, Me Too Springfield has added a new member to its team. A therapy dog named Bailey will now be a part of Me Too's sharing meetings. Bailey just got certified as a therapy dog this summer. Her job is to provide comfort for survivors who attend sharing meetings. Sit. It gives them a chance to touch something soft and warm, and that will give them unconditional love. During our um, survivor share nights, a lot of times we're talking about really heavy things. And so getting to have this big, lovable dog who just wants attention and, and wants to make you happy, and just having that feeling of somebody sitting there with you where you can pet them whenever you need to is just really nice. We also have some political coverage. Gun violence will be a big topic in Jefferson City today. A Senate committee studying gun violence is expected to hear several hours of testimony. The hearing begins at 10 a.m. Missouri Net reports each of the seven senators on the committee has invited witnesses from different backgrounds and expertise. U.S. Attorney Tim Garrison has noted that St. Louis, KC, and Springfield are three of the top 15 most violent cities in the nation. The committee is expected to come up with recommendations by December for the 2020 legislative session that begins in January. And Springfield City Council members are set to meet tonight, and they'll likely finalize the issues to take state lawmakers next year, what they will take on. Council members may vote tonight to adopt the city's legislative priorities for 2020. Those include addressing nuisance properties, limiting payday loans, and pushing for a statewide prescription drug monitoring program. Council members are also set to talk about a redevelopment plan for downtown Springfield. Developers want to declare the area near East St. Louis Street and Benton Avenue blighted. They also want to make a deal on taxes with the city. News happening throughout the Ozarks. Cross Lines is revving up for the holiday season already with this year's Cruise for Cross Lines as classic car owners got together to ride on Old Route 66 to Stratford before heading over to Fair Grove Schools this weekend. It was all in an effort to raise money and collect toys for those in need. We gather up toys and we also purchase toys too, but having events like this where we're to toys or money is donated really helps out. This is an event that helps out for the uh, Cross Lines toy store we have each year at the fairgrounds. Now, along with those donations, participants were given some trophies there, and spectators got their up close look at some cars and enjoyed some free barbecue. Good way to spend a Sunday. 
Sometimes it can be hard to carve out time during our week to spend one-on-one -on -one time with our kids. But in today's segment of Courageous Conversations, Everyone's Child, Nigel McDonald met with some fathers who see the importance of building that bond for both boys and girls. I think that it's a, you know, super important for for her to have a father and a mother, you know, both of them, you know, or someone filling those roles. Grady Wisdom is part of a group of dads who take time out of their schedules to eat breakfast at their child's school. I don't get like time to come to lunch with her and stuff like that, so it's nice before the day starts I can come and have breakfast and eat with her and kind of see her school. Wisdom says he thinks dads can sometimes get a bad rap. So it's important to see men like himself stepping up to the plate. I know there's a stigma that dads aren't around or whatever, the deadbeat dad. However, he says seeing close to 80 dads and granddads fill the cafeteria shows otherwise. That's awesome because when you step up, I mean, I, I'm a stepfather as well. So stepping into a role where, you know, you're not the biological parent, it's, uh, I don't think, you know, biology really matters at that point. Like, it's, it's, it's just someone being there and just showing love. And by the look of the smiles on the children's faces, you can see how something as simple as sharing breakfast can have a lasting impact. It gives me a little bit of time to get with him. I'm normally not here in the morning, so it gives me a little bit of extra time with him. You like having breakfast with dad? Yeah. Because we're going to. You like having your dad come and eat breakfast with you? It, what, do you what do you like about it? How does it make you feel? Bruce Cobb is part of a group called All Pro Dads. Its focus is to encourage dads to engage with children solo, and that's how the monthly breakfast was created. Cobb says positive interactions with the child are important, no matter how big or small they might be. I have a lady friend that she said that um, she had a fantastic dad, but if just once her dad would have come to school and had breakfast with her, that, you know, just something she'd always remember. Cobb says he believes dads help determine who a child will grow up to become. I don't know. I just feel like a dad, a kid with a good dad probably won't pick up a gun and use it on another person. He says the role a dad plays in a child's life is bigger than some might think. We were packed in here, which is really awesome because that means that's that's the many people that came and took time out of their day and you know made made it important for their kids, made it a priority to be here first thing in the morning. Nigel McDonald. So that's encouraging. It has to be, you know. Ozarks first. If you've missed our previous Courageous Conversations coverage, you can find all of that right on the Colorton News app or online at OzarksFirst.com. And then coming up tomorrow night. I'll have the next part of our series, which is talking about a mother's role. That's right. Just getting started for you, though, this morning here on Daybreak. Up next, the CEO of McDonald's has been fired. And Under Armour is under financial investigation. Both those stories come in your Money Watch. From Color 10 Ozarks First, Lauren Barnes, Joe Morano, and weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. This is Color 10 News Daybreak.
Now weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. Good morning on this Monday. I wanted to start us off with finally a look at some of this color starting to pop on our trees across the Ozarks. Lauren Barnes, our very own Lauren, took this picture out in Springfield. Some beautiful bright reds there. We've got some nice yellows in Douglas County. Brandon Kerr took that picture. And then down in Branson, some pretty bright oranges as well. So this color starting to come in. It's still a little bit patchy. We're seeing more of it in Springfield and areas to the north near Lake of the Ozarks, but a little bit patchy there. Some of that. Lighter color around Branson and Harrison. So here's a look at the fall color right now. Most of southern Missouri seeing that partial coverage, a little bit patchier to the south in northern Arkansas. Now we've had a problem getting this color in because September was too hot, October was too wet. So our peak is coming in a little bit late, but we're starting to see more of that color and we'll continue to see more of it as we keep chilly nights, mild sunny days, and no big storms to take those leaves off. Off of the trees. We're starting out with some seasonal 40s this morning. It's 41 degrees with some mostly clear skies and south winds. It's 39 in Branson, 45 in Fort Leonard Wood, and 40 in Mountain Grove. Winds are out of the south this morning at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and they're out of the south ahead of a cold front. That front comes through today, but we'll keep that mild air mass in place. We'll keep south winds in place through the first half of the day, and then they switch to the north once that front comes in. But you can see we've got that warmer air mass in place now, and there's nothing really all that cold behind that front. So we'll keep a mild day out there today. We'll increase the clouds, though, after 12 noon. We're starting to turn partly to mostly cloudy temperatures in the upper 50s to about 60 degrees. We get more moisture and more punch on that front on the overnight, so we'll start to break out a couple of showers late this evening and into the overnight. You can see the rain stays light and spotty and really focuses to the south here. It clears by tomorrow morning. We start out dry with temperatures in the upper 30s. Lots of sunshine tomorrow afternoon, but temperatures stay cool in the middle and upper 50s. The next thing that we're watching is a big storm that ejects out of California and gets here by late Wednesday into Thursday. We'll start to have some of that rain break out, I think, late. Wednesday. We're dry all day Wednesday afternoon. Then the front stalls Wednesday night into Thursday, and that will pack another cold rain across the Ozarks by Thursday afternoon, and we'll have another cool shot of air coming in after that. So with a stalled front, and more widespread rain. We do have a limited flood threat for areas pretty much along and south of I-44 here, where we could get another one to two inches of rain after a top 10 record wet October. So again, we're expecting a dry but cloudy Wednesday. I really don't think showers get here until late in the evening into the overnight. A cold rain Thursday afternoon. Uh, we're cloudy with those highs stuck in the 40s. Another one to two inches of rain possible, especially for the southern parts of our area. That would cause a localized flooding threat. Since we are so wet already, we do have much colder air coming in on the backside of this thing. But it looks like the cold air gets here too late. The rain is over, and then the cold air gets here, so we won't have that cold air to change from mix to snow for right now. If that speeds up, we'll have to keep an eye out for that. But temperatures do drop into the 20s by Friday morning. 60 degrees today, increasing clouds. Temperatures stay mild as winds shift to the north. A couple of showers on the overnight tonight with temperatures at 37 degrees. 58 tomorrow, some cool sunshine. We keep things mostly sunny. We'll have increasing clouds on Wednesday with showers arriving late to cold rain on Thursday. We'll see if stocks build on Friday's strong rally. The Dow soared 301 points. The Nasdaq rose 94 to an all time closing high, and the SP 500 gained 29. Also hitting a new record. McDonald says it fired Chief Executive Steve Easterbrook because of a consensual relationship he had with an employee. The board voted to oust Easterbrook, who also resigned, saying in an email to employees that he broke company policy regarding personal conduct. McDonald's USA President Chris Kempchinski immediately took the top spot. And did Under Armour cook the books? The sports apparel maker is reportedly facing a federal criminal investigation. According to multiple reports, the probe focuses on its accounting practices, including allegations it shifted quarterly sales figures. The company said in a statement it is cooperating with the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Justice Department and that it, quote, believes its accounting practices and disclosures were appropriate. 
The SEC declined to comment. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King Hall. Up next, it's sports another week without Patrick Mahomes. But the Chiefs do put one in the win column after Sunday. We'll take you to Arrowhead and take you through it after the break. Kansas City Chiefs won their first Super Bowl. That one came against the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl IV. Jumping forward to Sunday, the Chiefs and Vikings both have their sights on Super Bowl 54 in Miami. The Chiefs with a three-game home losing streak, the longest since late 2013 season. First quarter, no score. Matt Moore hasn't thrown a deep off in, but this is a beaut. He connects with Tyreek Hill, who dives in. Chiefs take the 7-0 lead. Hill then runs to celebrate, but Damian Williams, with the Chiefs down six in the third, runs to celebrate. A 91-yard touchdown scamper. Only Tyreek can catch up to Williams. That ties Jamal Charles for the longest touchdown run in Chiefs history. KC takes the one-point lead. Williams, obviously a man of the people. 2016, now in the fourth, Kirk Cousins responds. He finds Kyle Rudolph in the end zone for the score. Rudolph typically shines this time of the year. Chiefs would kick the field goal to tie it up. Now the final drive trying to win it. Moore hits Travis Kelsey to set them up in field goal range. Bring on Harrison Butker and buttkicker.com is pure. Centers it from 44 out. The Chiefs win. They get to 6-3 and three on the season. The Missouri State men's soccer team has been perfect so far. No draws, no losses. Straight winners through 14 games for the final time in the regular season, that is. The Bears take the field at Allison South. The Valley regular season champion Bears hosting Loyola Chicago. The Ramblers no slouch in the conference. They're second. No TV magic needed here. You saw the opening kickoff. The Bears already on the attack. Stuart Wilkin with the shot on goal. The keep blocks it. Right there is Matt Bentley for the goal. His seventh straight game with the score. Bears take the lead in 14 seconds. 
Backside of the first half, Jack Denton with the cross. Dawson Lee through traffic redirects it to the back of the net. Bears win 2 1. They get Drake on Saturday, then the Valley Tournament next week in Chicago. The NCAA field will be released on Monday, the 18th. The Lady Bears soccer team advances to the Valley semifinals and in baseball, Colton Wong, Alex Gordon named Gold Glove winners. That is a look at your morning sports. All right, we saw in that touchdown there, you know, Tyreek Hill ran and caught up with Damian Williams there. Mm -hmm. They clocked him going just over 22 miles per hour. Wow. <laughs> I heard Lauren over there even impressed with That's that. That's like as yeah. fast as a car. That is unbelievable, the speed that that guy has. So Man. Chief's very lucky right there and good to get another win for them, right? Yeah. All right, nice day up there. Nice day yesterday as well. Hopefully some people got outside yesterday. Yeah, we'll have a few more clouds today than we did yesterday, but still not bad, especially with those really rainy days that we've had the last couple of weeks. 37 degrees in Branson this morning. We've got uh, dry roads and some southerly winds out there. Temperatures are trending warmer than they did yesterday uh, by about 10 to 15 degrees, so not quite as cold at the bus stop this morning. It is seasonal, actually. 41 degrees at Lake of the Ozarks, 37 in Branson. And 41 in Springfield. Winds are out of the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So, great of an A this morning, sunshine and not as cold. A B by dismissal. Temperature is still pretty mild, but a cold front comes through and increases the cloud cover. So, it will be partly to mostly cloudy by the end of the day today. So, you can see that on future cast. Clouds increase to the north first and then dip into the Ozarks or into Springfield, I should say, by this afternoon with temperatures in the upper 50s to about 60 degrees. Then we start to get more of a punch along that front by this evening and overnight. A few showers break out. Uh, the rain will be spotty and light. Temperatures all above freezing. We drop into the upper 30s and the rain clears by tomorrow morning. Lots of sunshine tomorrow afternoon, but temperatures still below average at 58 degrees. If you need to rake some leaves, today is a good day to do it. We'll have light winds and some dry grounds. Tomorrow, too, that rain will be very light on the overnight and clears by tomorrow morning. Winds might be a little bit steady on Wednesday ahead of a stronger cold front. That's going to bring late Wednesday into Thursday. Thursday looks like it will be a washout. That strong front brings in another cold snap. Temperatures Gradually make it up into the upper 60s by Wednesday and then drop into the 40s Thursday and Friday along and behind that front. That will also bring another couple of hard freezes with temperatures dipping into the upper 20s by Friday morning and Saturday morning. Up next, House Democrats are expected to release transcripts on closed door testimonies. Plus, we have another update on the latest impeachment inquiry here. That's after the break.
It is 525. Welcome back to Daybreak this morning. House Democrats are expected to start releasing transcripts from the closed door testimonies in the impeachment inquiry as soon as today. Meanwhile, the president renewed his call for the anonymous whistleblower to be unmasked. CBS's Laura Podesta reports for us from New York. President Trump ramped up his attacks on the anonymous whistleblower this weekend. The whistleblower should be revealed because the whistleblower gave false stories. Some people would call it a fraud. The whistleblower's second hand account about the president's phone call with Ukraine's president has been the roadmap for the impeachment inquiry. The whistleblower gave a very inaccurate report about my phone call. My phone call was perfecto. It was totally appropriate. House Democrats say there's no need to question that person since investigators have corroborated the details through other testimony. Witness after witness after witness says, yes, I was there, I listened. Those are the facts. That's what's critical in any trial. You wouldn't call the whistleblower. What you call is the people who are actually there. The whistleblower's attorney says his client is willing to answer questions from Republicans in writing. I think that individual should come before the committee. He could come down to the basement, but he needs to answer the questions. But Democrats believe nothing will satisfy Republicans. The Republicans keep moving the goalposts. They tell, they tell us they want us to be transparent. When we're transparent, it's not good enough. Transcripts of the closed door depositions are expected to be released this week, with public hearings coming later this month. Laura Podesta, CBS News. House Democrats hope their star witness this week will be former National Security Advisor John Bolton, who they've asked to come testify on Thursday. We know that a handful of current White House officials have already said they will not show up this week. All right, still ahead for you, Arkansas police are investigating a shooting that left two teens hit by gunfire. And Airbnb is making changes to its policy after a deadly shooting. Welcome back into the show on this Monday morning. It's November 4th. I'm Lauren Barnes. And I'm Joe Morano. Hope everyone got a lot of sleep with that clock time change, right? Is that what you did with the extra hour? Uh, the extra hour doesn't bother me that much. I don't, it's kind of whatever. Yeah. I just like, it's a, look guys, it's a morning show person's dream <laughs> that the sun goes down at 5 o'clock now. I know. We everyone can go to else bed probably earlier. hates it. Everyone, I get it. I used to be on that side of this fight. Last night was awesome. Na last night's great now. It's dark at 5.30 <laughs> and it's bedtime for us. We need full night's sleep here, you know what I mean? Isn't that right, Elisa? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you 
<laughs> you said it all. I don't have much to add. Uh, I, I'm more <laughs> passionate about this than I thought I would be. Yes. Yeah, very. I fell asleep. What was it? Saturday night that the clocks went back, and I was really in her daze and confused because I woke <laughs> up and I was like, "How did only? How did two hours pass?" But you know, right. it's yeah, just yeah. The, that weird thing. But yeah, I said it really early last so, night. Like 5:13 was the sunset. Shorter days for sure on the way right now, but yep. hopefully it's a little bit nice out there, though. Uh, yeah, we'll have a nice day today. Increasing clouds, but temperature is still pretty mild. We're starting out with temperature seasonal in the 40s. It's 41 degrees in Springfield right now on southerly winds and just a few clouds out there this morning. Uh, we'll have a dry commute out there to work in school with just a few clouds. Uh, temperatures are trending much warmer than they were yesterday by about 5 to 10 degrees. It is 43 degrees in Ava, 37 in Branson, and 41 in Harrison. Winds are out of the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We're expecting dry roads as we head through the afternoon, so no weather hazards for you there. Uh, we'll have more clouds by dismissal, 60 degrees with that increase in cloud cover. Temperatures still holding mild as winds shift to the north. A couple of showers break out along that front overnight tonight. Then we're looking at another widespread cold rain on Thursday that could bring us a localized flooding threat. Details on that coming up in 10 minutes. We have some news around the region for you this half hour. The Springdale Civic Academy is promoting better community understanding and just produced its first graduates. Nearly 20 students just completed the 12 week program. Classes included Springdale Police, Fire, and Animal Service learnings. Those who completed the academy told us they feel more comfortable as community members. Lulu Pareto is the welcoming coordinator for Springdale and says officials think this could be good for community engagement. A lot of the students want to know what's next. They want to see if maybe next year we can have another Civic Academy with different departments. And Pareto also told us it's a two way street. The classes help students, but local government benefits from it as well. Little Rock police are investigating a shooting at a hotel where two teens were hit by gunfire. It happened at the Staybridge Suites on South University Avenue yesterday morning. Authorities found two victims, a boy and girl, shot multiple times. The boy is in critical condition at last check while the girl is stable. Detectives are working to piece together what happened. Detectives are processing the scene upstairs on that second floor and interviewing witnesses that were still here. Uh, early information we do, we, we've been told that there was some sort of party last night that occurred, um, and I guess some type of altercation or disturbance that carried over to this morning. Police still need to find who that room was registered to that the minors were staying in. No suspect information has been released at this time. Elsewhere around America, 2020 General Election Day is just one year away. The presidential election will be held Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. The latest head to head polls show President Trump trailing Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren, but the Democratic presidential nominee won't even be picked until the Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee in mid July. It's unknown what impact, if any, the House impeachment inquiry will have on Trump's re election bid. And voter support. About 100 people attended a vigil in Rumney, New Hampshire last night for a couple from the town found murdered in Corpus Christi, Texas last week. James and Michelle Butler were reported missing October 23rd. The couple had been traveling around the country since June of 2018, but their remains were found on Padre Island Beach buried in the sand. The medical examiner's office ruled the deaths as homicides. Officials plan to release more information on that case later on today. Milwaukee police say they've arrested a 61 year old man in an acid attack over the weekend. Police say the suspect threw what's believed to be battery acid on the victim, causing second degree burns. The victim says he and the man got into an argument over how he had parked his car. He says his attacker called him an illegal and told him to get out of this country before throwing the acid on his face from a bottle. A family spokesman says the victim is originally from Peru, but is a U.S. citizen and has been in the U.S. for 19 years. Years. Police say the suspect was arrested for aggravated battery on Saturday. There are drastic changes coming to Airbnb following a deadly party at one of its home rentals. A fifth person has died this weekend following a shooting at a San Francisco area home, so Airbnb is now taking action. Rick Damagella has a closer look at the new policies. A Halloween house party turns deadly. Five people shot and killed at this Airbnb rental in the San Francisco area. Arinda is a very small, very safe, very family-oriented community. 
It is not accustomed to violence. The shooting is still under investigation, but Airbnb is banning party houses at its rental properties to prevent similar incidents from taking place. The company's CEO tweeting, We must do better, and we will. This is unacceptable. In additional tweets, Airbnb detailed a new course of action, saying it's implementing a more stringent guest screening program, creating a party house rapid response team, and anyone found in violation of the upgraded policies could be removed. Authorities say the Halloween party in Orinda, California was advertised on social media and more than 100 people showed up. The deadly shooting took place Thursday night at an Airbnb rental that specifically does not allow parties. Uh, there are going to be folks that don't follow the rules. That's unfortunately the way the world works. It is still unclear what led up to the chaotic scene that left five dead and several others injured. No arrests have been made so far. Two, D, two teens are dead and a child was taken to the hospital after a fire engulfed a townhouse in Washington State. This is near Seattle. The boy suffered smoke inhalation but was walking and talking, according to officials. Neighbors used rocks to break the windows and heard screaming inside. Witnesses say police did all they could to reach the children trapped inside. We also have a consumer watch now. The Better Business Bureau is warning of a scam in which con artists pretend to be cable companies. Here's how it works you get an unsolicited call from a special promotion on your cable bill. If you pay for a few months up front, you'll get a discounted monthly rate. You're then asked to buy prepaid debit cards to make the upfront payment. When in doubt, they remind you verify special deals with your cable company and never make payments with prepaid debit cards or wire transfers. We're starting out with some dry roads in Springfield this morning on our Color 10 Live Drive. It's actually a nice November start. Temperatures finally seasonal. It's 41 degrees in Springfield and 37 in Branson. An update on a cold front that comes through today. We'll talk about that next. Forecast first on Color 10 News, Ozarks First. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Monday. I wanted to start us off looking at some of the fall color that's finally starting to pop across the Ozarks. Some beautiful reds spotted by our very own Lauren Barnes in Springfield. Got some pretty yellows around Douglas County. Brandon Kerr sent in that picture. And then some orange are popping in Branson as well. So finally, slowly but surely, we're starting to see some of this color come through. It's still a little bit patchy around most of the Ozarks. More of that color in Springfield and areas to the north. Uh, Branson and 
comparison, seeing some of that patchy color as well. Here's a look at the map of what that fall color looks like now. For the most part, southwest Missouri seeing some partial coverage, a little bit patchier to the south still. We're looking at that peak headed uh, or near peak within the next week or two. Uh, we haven't really had the best weather conditions for the fall color because we had a September that was way too hot and an October that was way too wet. So uh, what we need is the chilly nights and the mild sunny days. Not a lot of wind and that light first for us. So that's put that peak a little bit uh, later this year, but we're starting to see more of that color come through. We've got some seasonal temperatures out there this morning. It's 41 degrees in Springfield. When mostly clear skies and southerly winds. It's 37 degrees in Branson, 43 in Ava, and 45 in Fort Leonard. Woodwinds are out at the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and we're keeping southerly winds ahead of a front that's up to the north and west. These southerly winds will hold tight for at least the first half of the day, and then that front will come through, switch winds to the north by this afternoon, but we don't really have a colder air mass behind that front. We're pretty mild ahead of the front and behind the front as as well. So we'll still keep temperatures uh, up around 60 degrees. We'll have that front uh, bring an increase in clouds or partly to mostly cloudy by the end of the day, but we don't really squeeze out rain until later on this evening in the overnight. We'll start to get more of a punch along this front by tonight. A couple of showers possible. The rain should be pretty light and spotty and quick. It exits by tomorrow morning with clearing skies and temperatures in the upper 30s. Lots of sunshine by tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures still cool at 58 degrees with the sunshine that is still below average. The next big storm is off of the Pacific coast, and that gets here late Wednesday into Thursday. I think we spend most Wednesday dry. We'll start to see some showers break out late. And then Thursday, that front stalls, and that's going to set up a pretty wet day with some locally heavy rain possible, uh, pretty similar to the last couple of systems where it just sits all day and we keep that moderate rain through the afternoon and then it clears going into Thursday night and then into Friday morning. Uh, with that steady rain again, we could be looking at a limited flood threat because we're coming off of one of the top 10 wettest Octobers. So a lot of the ground is pretty saturated with another one to two inches possible, especially in this yellow area and the limited uh, conditions, we could be looking at a limited flood threat. So again, we're expecting a dry but cloudy Wednesday. Showers arrive late. A cold rain on Thursday. Thursday keeps temperatures in the 40s. Another one to two inches of rain possible. That brings us a localized flooding concern. That cold air for now looks like it arrives too late for a mix to snow. Looks like the rain is over and then the cold air gets here. Temperatures drop into the 20s by Friday morning. Again, we'll have to watch that timing to see if we can get in on any snowflakes before the whole thing exits. 60 degrees today, an increase in clouds and mild. 37 overnight with a couple of showers possible. 58 degrees tomorrow. Some cool sunshine on easterly winds. We keep clouds again on Wednesday, 61 degrees there, a cold rain on Thursday. Still ahead for you, a new study is showing an increase in adults with ADHD. We'll take you through why so many adults are being diagnosed with the disorder in just a few minutes.
546 this morning as we look at some medical coverage for you. A new health study finds an increase in adults being diagnosed with a disorder that can make it harder for you to perform everyday tasks. Andrew Epperson tells us why more adults are being diagnosed with ADHD. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is commonly thought to affect kids, but now is rising in prevalence among adults. This according to a new study published in the medical journal JAMA Network Open. The study indicated there was a 43% increase in the rate of adults being diagnosed over a 10-year period. More than 5 million medical records from 2007 to 2016 were used for the report. Information collected by the Mayo Clinic shows symptoms of ADHD in adults include problems focusing, poor time management, mood swings, and a temper. This can be a problem for college students as well. And the University of Arkansas Health Center's Assistant Director of Communications, Zach Brown, says it's a lengthy process to get diagnosed. In order to get an ADHD diagnosis, a student would need to go through diagnostic testing. Uh, we do not do diagnostic testing here at the University of Arkansas. However, we do uh, you know, offer referrals into the community. The Mayo Clinic says if symptoms disrupt your life, you need to see a doctor and find out if you could have ADHD. ADHD was the tag right there. We move on now, change some gears to some entertainment news up next. Green Eggs and Ham debuts on Netflix this week. Get excited. I am excited. Plus, Miranda Lambert, I can tell you firsthand, is on fire. She's out with a new album, too. We'll go through that in your entertainment news up next.